Okay, uh, we got a 1.6 liter GDI engine out of a Kia Soul. This is a 2013. I um, believe these are going to be um, in the Accents, the Kia Rios. Going to be the same. But anyways, we're going to be uh, disassembling this. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Now this engine here has been locked up uh, for whatever reason. And uh, I had swapped it out of my 2013 Kia Soul. So the um, little purge solenoid is gone off here. I had to use that on another vehicle. But we're just going to go ahead and start with taking this intake off first. All right, so we've got a um, we've got 12 millimeter nuts and bolts holding this on. And of course we got some hoses here. Need to pop that off. Okay, this wire here is held on by a 10 millimeter bolt and then it clips in right here before we can actually remove this. Okay, we also have some more coolant hoses and they go to the uh, throttle housing. Now these uh, GDI injectors are usually very difficult to pry out of here. So we got our uh, GDI harness, the pressure sensor here. Okay, I'm really surprised those came out that easily. But uh, there you have those. So now you have these little um, special seals, like these Teflon seals down at the end here. And then you have this little special seal down here. And it looks like somebody had tried to RTV this or silicone it. I'm actually amazed that this had been working at one time. I don't know how good, but it had been working at one time with RTV in here. I've never seen that before. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this knock sensor. Fifteen sixteenths will remove this oil sensor here. This may still have coolant, so I got a pan handy. These are twelves. Usually they will drip. Okay, this coolant pipe that runs around here, where I just took the thermostat out, it's 12 millimeter, holding this end. 
couple of tins. We got our variable timing solenoid for the intake, 10 millimeter. Got our alternator tensioner and lift bracket. Ron, here's where our O2 sensors connect on the back side and the other lift eyelet. Okay, and here's where your um, high pressure pump would be. It's already been removed. It's getting off cam sensors they look identical get our BVT for the exhaust let's get on our water pump I'm getting my pan ready. I probably have more cooling in here. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, that's stuck. Got a little pry point right here. A little more coolant, not much. Get this idler here. This is a 22. All right, let me get my breaker bar. This is pretty tight. We'll see how this is going to go. Now, I'm not having to hold this because, again, the end is locked up. Otherwise, you have to hold, hold it still. that big bolt. It's got a keyway. Right, so we've got a lot of 10 millimeters. We're going to get on this valve cover. Here's that little cam follower that come out of there. I can tell that's not the original valve cover gas. There's no way it would have came off that easy. We're going to get this out of the way and then we're going to get on that front cover. See it has its own little seals there. 
So I think we've got some 10s and 12s maybe. I only see about three of these 12s. Sometimes you can get lucky and kind of knock the silicone loose, but no one get too rough with it. Yeah, I missed one right down here. I don't know if anybody caught that. Got a few spots on each side you can kind of pry a little bit, but the problem with these locating pegs on here is where they stick, they get rusty, and you can break one of these front covers easily. So you just have to kind of take your time with it, work it from both sides. So the alignment peg is right down here in this middle part, that's where you kind of fo need to focus on. side let's see the back side where the oil pump is bolting on right there all right so we're going to get the tension chain guides All right so I think we'll go ahead and get up there and get our cams Remove next, or we'll get these tins back here. Okay, uh, this one here actually snapped off. I don't know if they're snapping because they were over tightened or because the engine was overheated and locked up. You know, these buckets that go in here are actually quite 
expensive. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to hold on to some of these. <clears throat> Supposedly, they're supposed to be marked. I can't see anything. All this oil. Okay, we've got all of our buckets out of there. Next thing we're going to get on is our head bolts. And uh, for this, you're going to need a special tool. So you're going to need a tool like this. And it's, this one is an M10. And it's called a triple square 12 point. And you've probably never heard of one of these, but this is what you need now. Said on the 1.6 liter in this year, you need the M10. There's some, I think for the 2.0s, you may need an M12. Said you can find these, but um, you also got to make sure that it's got an extended, like this is probably a couple inches right here. You gotta have that little bit of a narrow extension to get down in here. And I'm also using a half inch drive. And this is an, an impact. Or I'm not going to use an impact with these. These are going to be very tight to break loose. And you're going to hear it crack when you finally get it loose. And all these are going to be this way. So if you try to use a Torx bit, you're going to break your bit. And more than likely strip the uh, bolt head out. We're going to just go through these and crack them loose. said, you can find these, but they're not real easy to locate. And um, you also can't use a stubby one because it won't fit in here. Now, I've already took the oil pan off of this, and I've allowed it to drain. It's been draining for a good bit. It's trying to get every bit of the residue out of here. Now we got some washers down there. I want to go with a smaller magnet. The washers staying down in there. So and this is some of the worst smelling oil when you take these loose. Still got a little bit of coolant, but not a lot. Of course, you can see all of the rust. Obviously, you know the head gasket had went first, and I'm sure this head is warped. And you can see the condition of this. So the head gasket went, and it probably just proceeded to leak coolant and everything till eventually it just locked completely up or it's set and locked up after it quit running. Okay, so we've got it flipped over here. I'm gonna start taking this, uh, got a 12 millimeter. May need a little bit more of an extension for some of these, but we're gonna start taking all of these 12s with this bed plate. Well, looks like we need to get this pickup tube here. Now, this has got 12 millimeter nuts. Let me take that out of the way. Got some really long bolts up here in the front. 
Okay, it looks like the only other one we got left is this bolt that's coming up through the bottom here where the oil filter would be. So we just need to zip that 12 off there. Okay, so we've got these 10 millimeter. We're using a 12, just a 12 point socket. Now, even though this is locked up, these are easy to get to. The rods here, so just get you in a little closer. So we're just taking these. All right, now we got the main bearing caps. These are 12, 12 sided, 12 millimeter. All right, so the impact wasn't getting it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just crack them loose with this first. All right, we got all of our main bearing caps out of the way. Should be able just to lift this right up and out of here. Oh, so then we just got these little bearings down in here to pop out. All right, and at this point, usually we can just take and knock these pistons out. But it does take some doing because they're going to be so seized in here. Okay, so I finally got those knocked out of there, that wooden block. I had to use a little WD-40 to get them to kind of break free. And this is what we have left. Everything stripped down. This is a bare block, as bare about as you can get. So, anyways, that is uh, going to do it for the video. Um, I'm disassembling this, and hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching.